Hi guys, let's. I'm Zoe Dimitrov. Just wanted to um, introduce you to Luke Wilson. We're here to let's talk about ice. Um, let's just start with some acknowledgements first. I'd like to thank everyone who helped. Who made? Nah, sorry. I'd like to thank everyone who helped make the op shop at Scarber Street come to pass and open last week. And everyone, too many people to name. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. Think the new op shop is 130 Scarborough Street, Southport, and the one at 204 Narang Street, Southport is still open. So we'd love to come down, see you come down and grab some bargains. Okay, big thank you to everyone who helped make Ebenezer House come to pass, our new transitional centre. Thank you to Nightlight for the no donations of beds, Lions Club for all the items that they donated, and um, Gardner Cars is having an end of financial year sale. And if you go down there and buy a car, guys, and you put a token in the AIC char jar, we get a percentage of, of that sale. So that's awesome. Um, we also need volunteers for the op shop at Narang Street. So if you, anyone has any free time during the day, if they could come down and help us, that'd be awesome. Okay, guys, so we're here with Luke. Hi, Luke. Uh, hi, Zoe. How are you going? Good, mate. Um, so, sorry. <clears throat> Tell me about yourself, Luke. How long have you been um, on ice? Or how long have you been clean, sorry? Yeah, well, I've been clean for, let's say, just over four years. Yep. And how long were you on ice? Would have been around a good 10 years because I only came out in the late 2000s really because before that I was having the um, old school speed you know which is a lot different yeah but um, my habit has been probably about 32 years all up. 32 years yeah. all up. Well, on drugs all yeah. Wow yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. I started with smoking weed yeah. at five, six years old. Wow. Five, and six years old you're yeah, smoking weed? Yeah, yeah. What the heck? Yeah, yeah I was a deeper little brat, you know, but anyway. Um, and then, yeah, when I was 10 years old, I started having lines of angel dust. Yeah. And 13 stick of needles in here. Wow. And um, down with a spiral, you know, I got addicted, of course. So who gave who was the one who first gave you needles? Um, first one who actually gave me needles would have been my cousin. Oh wow! Yeah, um, rest his soul. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, what was your childhood like then? It was actually good. Yeah, and to be honest, like yeah, like a lot of people um, can blame my parents, but no, they're beautiful people. Yeah, Dad was a worker. He worked basically twenty four seven. Yeah. Mm. If he didn't have the family, he, he would have, you know, but um, he supported the family. Yeah. Yeah, um, mum and dad, you know, and they end up um, having their own business as well, cleaning. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but of course they had something on the side, you know, but um, me being a little kid, what do I go out looking for? My birthday Christmas presents. Yeah, find things that I shouldn't have been touching, but yeah. Yeah, I don't blame them, you know, and um, they taught, they tried to teach us all the right things in life, you know, and, um, Basically, it's made the Ten Commandments in a sense, you know, do not steal, do not lie, do yep. not cheat. Mm -hmm. You know, and, um, but yeah, I've done the total opposite, as what you do when you're kids, you know. Yeah, we do. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> do the opposite of what parents are, you know. Yeah. But yeah, you do this, you do the opposite. Okay. But yeah, yeah, and um, but one thing is, proverb, I think it's 22 6, and that's one that's been coming to me of late because. It actually says train a child as the way they should go when they're young, and they won't depart from when they get older. Yeah. So mum and dad did. They tried train us the right way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's what I actually tell them. Yeah, you know, like now, look, look at me. You know, and I'm I'm living proof that we can break through from this cycle. You know, and um, no one's too lost. No one's too yeah you know, too broken to be saved and restored. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. So, what was your life like during the addiction? Well, 
was, um, yeah, you know, it's true. I loved it, you know. Loved, loved life being high. Mm. Yeah, you know, like, I can't say that, yeah, it was because of my upbringing, you know what I mean? Because I used because I wanted to use. Yeah. You know, and, um, there's one thing I'm going around the mountain, going around the circles. No matter how much I tried to break free, I couldn't. Yeah. Um, not every drug you can think of. But um, praise God, he came alive and did it to me, but mm -hmm. set me free. But um, from a young age, I was, I was lost, you know. Um, lonely, you know what I mean? Like, you know, and doing all the wrong things just for the drugs, you know, and going out, yeah, finding a loose woman and whatnot. And, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, doing the wrong thing, yeah. And, um, yeah. My, my thing of clubbing, you know, instead of going, my clubbing, as everyone else did, my clubbing was going out and baseball batting people, you know, but um, it didn't do well for my criminal history, you know, being about jail for 18 years. But, yeah, so what was it like being in jail? Well, at first, it's all fun and games, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like, you yeah, and there, deal drugs and bash people, you know. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, I always say you get bashed as well, you know, no one's too, you know, no one's tough, you know, like, um, there's always someone tougher. Always someone bigger. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, like, the cycle of jail in mountain, 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 you know, for 18 years. So, yeah, it was life, it's life of hell, to be honest. Yeah. yeah and, um, especially, you know, now the drugs are just running rampant, rampant in there. Mm -hmm. It's the subjects, of course. Yeah. And, um, yeah, there's no morals, no respect, no loyalty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you know, chimes when actually kick in the teeth, you know, just throw an extra ready. Yeah, but yeah, that's all good, you know. Life goes on, you know, on the outside, and especially once you find Jesus. Yeah. So, you went in and out of jail for 17, 18 years? 18 years, 18 years. So, what, what made you stop after 32 years of addiction? God spoke to me. Where, where were you when God I was in the watch house. Yeah. So before, prior to that, so what? In 2015, 16, 17, I was dealing again after getting out of jail. Yeah. Um, ripped off bikers, stole one of their guns, and I was on the streets in the city dealing drugs, doing stupid crap. Yeah, get busted by coppers, loaded firearm, public um, explosives. Yeah. Groups body harm, serious assault. Plus, had drug charges from the start of the year where I got raided. But yeah, then I'm in the watch house training. Yeah. I heard an audible voice. You should not be in that pool, you got all fight for you. So I look around me, nothing there. I think I'm just cracking up, that's why I need help. <laughs> So I blew it off and get back down and down praying again. Next minute, same word, more power, more authority. Mm. You should not fear that, Lord your God, I'll fight for you. Every hair of my body stood up. What sensation in your heart? I said, got up, I have to ask the question, who are you? He's turned, thought I'm your Lord, you want to change, leave in your heart, I'll change you. From that day forward, I actually felt a weight lift off me and I was mm. set free. Wow. Yeah, you know, like I had an encounter of the love of Jesus. That's the only thing that set me free. Yeah, I tried everything else. I've done anger management. I've done substance abuse. I've done all that other kind of stuff. No. But it wasn't until I found Jesus that I actually broke free, and um, I praise Him, I glorify Him every, every day. You know, and yeah. I was one who used to kick Him in the teeth. I was a warlock. You know, he was laying incantations and spells and curses. But still, He loved me. He said, "You're my son." Mm. Yeah, and once I received sonship, I now walk in it. And it's that love, yeah, the perfect love that casts it all fear. It's a love that covers my of sins. Mm -hmm. He's not a wrathful God, he's a loving God. Yeah, he just can't leave us where we were at, you know. He wants to change us and he wants us to set free. He wants us to walk in that freedom. Yeah, he does. Yeah, and um, it's a beautiful thing about it, yeah. And once you actually grasp who he is and what he can do for your life, it's amazing, yeah. And I feel for people who still are out there lost and confused and they've grown up in religion. So they've actually walked away. Yeah. All God wants is a relationship. He wants your heart. You know? and once you give him your heart, that's when you actually feel freedom. That's when you actually feel him coming to live on the inside of you. Yeah. Revelation 3.20 says that he stands at the door of your heart knocking. 
All he wants you to do is open up so he can come and dine with you. He just wants to have a meal with you, you know. And that's what I've done, you know, like, when I, got, when I was in jail, I actually, you know, accepted him in the watch house. I get to Brisbane Correctional Centre on the 28th of April, 2017. Mm -hmm. My introduction was my head jumped all over by that biker. They said everyone thought I was dead. And meanwhile, I got told by doctors back in 2013, when we hit the head, I was dead. Wow. Now, on the third day, I rose. <laughs> it's <actually> funny. <laughs> yeah, it is funny. Got my head crap, you know, I jumped on the Friday. On the Sunday, I rose and back at the unit preaching the gospel. The gospel I didn't even know. But here I am preaching it. Yeah, I got my King James Version Bible and it stuck with me ever since. And it um, was all God, it's all what He'd done for me, you know. Nothing I could do, you know, I let on my own strength, my own strength got me into trouble. You know, because I wanted to use my muscles, strike my muscles and bash people, you know. That was about it, but as soon as I accepted him, he formed my buttocks for me. And I've got the victory in him now, so. Yeah, right. That's amazing. So, um, so you stayed in jail after this? I was in, in jail for a year. Yeah. I was in jail for a year and, um, I was looking at 10 years, you know, loaded fire on. Plus bullets, grizz bodily harm, um, serious assault on police, serious assault on paramedics, um, plus big drug charges where they had a taser, for me um, implants, crack pipe, needles, um, bong, scales, um, ice, and what? Yeah, you know, praise God, they were looking for. Um, Shotgun, but I um, didn't have one. Okay, yeah, they were missing. But anyway, um, yeah, I should be, I should have been looking at it a long time, especially with the record. Yeah, I got twelve pages for the record. Mm. So, what did you lose from this addiction? Like, what did it cost you? My family it cost me my life, cost me everything, it cost me my livelihood, it cost yeah. me freedom. Yeah, you know, um, I could have had a good life. Yeah, you know? mm. yeah. You know, in all the truth, like 2004, I was trying to change my life, you know. I had a, had a good missus. Yeah. But, um, yeah, my brother got bashed in jail, so I went in to fix it. Jumped all over these people's head. So that broke that relationship up. Still a downward spiral for me, just kept getting out and going back to addiction. Mm. You know, being a neighbourhood dope dealer. But now I'm your friend's neighbourhood hope dealer, you know, dealing hope to the loss. Oh, yeah, but um, that was his change, that's his change in life, you know. Mm. But yeah, prior to him, I destroyed my whole familyhood, destroyed my whole life, you know, I destroyed my family as well. My parents, you know, lost all respect for me. Yeah. You know, but praise God, he's actually reconciled that relationship. You know, and it's beautiful, you know, like dad was my rock. Mm. Even now Jesus is my rock, he's my rock now, but you know, dad yeah. after that, but even still dad wrote me off in 2013, he said there was no change for me, no hope for me. Yeah. But when I went on the Emmaus walk back in 2019, we get all these letters on the fourth day and they're reading the first two, next minute, the third one I get to and I've seen the email address, you know, I'm thinking, hmm, you're always your dad, you know. I read, he's gone, dear son, as you know, I wrote you off in 2013 because I thought there was no change for you, there was no hope. You haven't just exceeded my expectations to remain clean. You now got far behind helping the community, you know. And, well, you know, I thought my tears I was broken, you know, but mm. praise God that He can restore them broken relationships no matter what, you know. Yeah. They're things what we do to ourselves, you know. We don't realise how much these drugs can affect us. Oh, yeah. We don't we don't see it, you know. We can look in the mirror and we think we're looking pretty sharp, you know. Mm. But everyone else around us can turn around and say, listen, you, you look fried, there's something wrong with you, you know, you need help. Yeah. No, I'm fine, nothing wrong with me, you yeah. know. Even though you want your 42 kilos ringing wet. Yeah, you know, that's right, eh? Like, you think, yeah, got yeah. muscle looking, looking tired, you know. No, got no tone there, you know. Skin and bones, yeah. Skin and bones, that's right. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, praise God, you know, like. It puts you in a free. delusion, doesn't it? It, it does, really it does. It puts you in a delusion, it like. Does. You know, guys, if um, you, you, you're on ice tonight and um, you need help, please call 1800 No to Ice. So it's one 800 4623 
Well, family support. So if your loved one is on ice, your son's on ice, and you know, here's Luke after 32 years of addiction, he's got clean, which is a miracle. Um, you can call the family support line, which is 0481 844 Or you can also call the AIC head office, which is 565-6063. You know, guys, um, there is hope. Like, yeah, yeah. this addiction really is a killer. And, you know, we can be stuck here. But there, there's only 2% of people that make it out. And, like, if you want to be one of those 2% of people, just reach out because there's people here to help. You know, I wish I had AIC from the start when I was, you know, heavily addicted on drugs. And um, I'm just so grateful for what AIC is doing for other people. And we're trying to get other people's stories, their hope stories out because um, there is hope. Like, um, you know, your parents rode you off and now yeah. you, you reconcile. Yeah. That's just Amen. amazing, you know. And, you know, for the parents out there that are writing their kids off, it's actually the worst thing you can do um, is, you know, once you, like, break away, like, break away from them and ignore them, it actually makes them worse. So it's good to get some counselling, some family support, so you can be there for them but not enable them. So that's what we encourage you to do. Call family support and um, know there's hope. Like, Luke's story is just amazing. So, yeah, so... Um, I encourage anyone out there who's actually stuck in addiction, mm. just know that you aren't alone. There yeah. is always someone out there who cares. There's people out there who love you mm. and do want to help you. Yeah, you know, they're not judging you. Yeah. They just want you to get seek the help when you need. Yeah, you know, when we're blinded, you know, because we're addicted, yeah. we think that everyone's just got it against us. Mm. They're not. They're for us. You know that it's. They just want change. They want. They want to see us reach the potential they know we've got. Mm. Yeah, you know, we can exceed abundantly. Yeah. If we just trust and break free of them chains. You know? Yeah, that's right, Luke. So, what would you tell anyone that's listening? You know, that was considering doing drugs. What would you tell them about this drug, Luke? I tell them not to. <laughs> yeah, you know, literally grabs you by the balls, and there's no turning back. You know. Um, you do anything to get your next shot, mm -hmm. your next pop, whatever you, however you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You do anything. Yeah. You turn on your best mate. You know. You turn on your grandmother. Let's say. You know. Especially when it gets to the heroin. You know. And our highs are just as bad these days. You know. Just destroying lives. Mm. You know. I've seen it. And watch it. Watch it on the streets. You know. It's not good. You know. It's not good. Mm. But just know there is. There's hope out there. You know. If you've got them thoughts, go and seek counselling. Go and see, speak to someone who can help you. Call AIC. A AIC, exactly right. You know, Australian anti ice campaign. Yeah. You know, people like this who are actually setting an example, who are trying to help people in need. Mm. You know, ring them, give them a ring and get the support, get the counselling what you need. You know, because we can't do it on our own. Yeah, that's right. We can't do it on our own. But we need to make, be strong in our minds to Amen. do it. Um, so what would you say that um, your life's like now, Luke? Like... I'm blessed. I'm yeah. blessed to be a blessing. Yeah. You know, that's an honest truth. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, you know, like, like, yeah, you know, I might not have a house. I might not, you know, have everything I need. Yeah, you know, well, have everything I want, but I've got everything I need. Yeah, you know, and mm. that's a good heart. Mm. I've got support around me. I've got brothers and sisters that love me. You don't, yeah, you, know, you don't want nothing from me. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and going out and just helping to support people who were in that same predicament as I was, you know, and being that light in the darkness, you know, that's, that's what matters now, you know, and it's amazing, you know, like, I'm blessed, I'm absolutely blessed, you know, and I'm fat, you know, that's the one that's good, you know, like, you know, praise, praise God. God, you know, like, you know, like you know, it's just on the natural, it's in the spiritual too, because he's there pouring his love into me daily, mm. you know, he fills me up to the overflow, and, you know, I love him, you know, and, you know, just know, you know, like, yeah. When you do break them chains, you watch everything in your life change. You watch mm. everything come back together like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. You know, as I said, you know, he's the master potter, we are the clay. He moulds us and shapes us into what he created us to be. Yeah, you know, so it's amazing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so Luke actually helps people a lot. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, it's not me. I, it's not you. Jesus yeah, helps, yeah, but he, like he, um, he does do a lot. Yeah. So you want to tell him what you do, Luke? Well, is he like now, a, yeah. It's not me. It's actually God who does it. Okay, so yeah. um, I'm involved with you know, an organisation called Fishers of Men, mm -hmm. who are amazing people. You know, who actually they've got discipleship programs. Yeah. You know, where other people might call them rehabs, right? So they've got three houses. I'm two are open at the moment, trying to get the other one open. But you know, we're supporting the people who are trying to break their chains, who are trying to get set free. Yeah, you know, it's not us who do it, and it's not you know Bobby and Brenwyn who do it. Yeah. But they point you in the right direction, which is Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah and um, it's amazing what he does. You know, and, you know, if you look up Fish of the Men, you know, and Anti-Ice as well, they actually support them as well and send people there mm -hmm. um, who need to break the addictions. And that's know. only for men. Fish uh, yeah, the yeah men. it's only for men. Yeah. But we do um, also have a furniture um, department where we help people out with furniture as well. Mm -hmm. And we give out meals as well. So um, we've got food parcels. And it's not like you know, all these other organisations where you can only have two pass two food parcels every financial year. Yeah, but yeah, we're always there to support no matter what. Um if you need furniture, give them a ring, you know, and Yeah. Yeah, but That's yeah. Awesome. We, we do six hundred meals a week for the homeless at the moment because of COVID, but it's amazing, mm -hmm. you know, people are needing homeless and always need to help, you know. And the this disadvantage, yeah, and we've been there. Every one of us have been there. We've been lost. We've had no hope. Yeah. But it's good that there's people out there who are supporting, you know, and just like Australian anti ice campaign. Yeah. Well, they want to see people, they want to see people free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, it's amazing. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. And it's it's so good to see Luke, you know, I, I know Luke personally, and yeah, what he does on the streets and fishes a man, it's just incredible. And like, guys, you know, if you, you're, you're just at the worst of the worst, like your whole life can be turned around. Like this thing, this addiction can be just used to go and help so many more people be free from it. Like that's what actually Luke and I both are doing. Amen. And um, you know, everyone that works at AIC and Fishers of Men, you know, um, we're using our mess to help people, you know, our past to help people, you know, and- Well, it's our mess once became a message. It's yeah, a message that's right. So it's just really good. Um, yeah, so from the thing, do you want to add anything else? No, I'm right. But yeah, like yeah, just yeah, like I just feel for anyone who's out who's out there who's stuck, you know, who's stuck at the moment and um mm. believe they've got no way. There is a way. Mm. Yeah, you know, and all I can say is seek counselling. Seek the right people, like Australian anti ice campaign. Yeah, you know, and seek them, talk to them, and they'll put you in the right right direction to get the help what you need. You know, break the cycle, you don't need to be going in out of jail, you know. It's gonna get you no life, you know, get back into work, get employment, you know, and start making something of yourself, you know, have a family, have children, support these children the right way if you've already got them, you know. Mm. You know, like that's one thing, you know, I praise God for, even though I've always wanted a family, I've always wanted kids, but I praise God that he didn't bless me with children back in the day because I was I was a scumbag. I had no hope, I was just going nowhere. It was all about me, I was selfish. Yeah. You know, and, um, I just want to be next hit. That's what I wanted. Mm. You know, and um, no, being in that jail, what kind of father is that? You know, I'm not there for my child. You know, mm. but I believe that God's going to provide because He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider, mm. and He will provide all our needs. You know, and, yeah, trust. You know, trust in the people around you. You know, but yeah, you know, the ones who are off the drugs, let's say. But you know, people who are on drugs, you can't trust them. You know, yeah. I know because I was one of them. You know, I tell you what you want to hear. You know. Um, praise God for freedom. Yeah, and we also have a, at AIC we have a buddy system. So if you ring up us for support, we we have a buddy system that we can put you on a tripod of support. Amen. So we get you into counselling, we get you into detox, we have depending what level that you're at, we can support you and put you in the right direction. I've got a lot of people that ring me and just say, hey, you know, I've seen how you're doing in recovery. You know, tell me what to do, help me. So we're here all the time, you know, the buddies are 24 hour support and um, you can just, you know, you can't think when you're affected by ice and, you know, it takes over your frontal lobe 
So the body thinks for you and sets everything up for you and organizes things, okay? So you can get off this terrible drug because this thing is really, it, it steals everything that you love. It robs everything from you that is good, you know. Um, me still, I'm suffering because, and I think Luke as well, we've got criminal records. So who wants to employ a criminal even though they've been clean for how many years? So this, this addiction has long-term effects years after you know it's it's not worth it guys it's yeah. really not worth it at all you know um yeah it really isn't so if you um need help call that 1-800 no to ice yeah and just reach out guys we, no one's going to judge you all our buddies are lived experience and they know what they're talking about we haven't just read a textbook we've walked through this and we will walk you out of it Amen. if you are willing to hold a hand we'll walk you out so yeah. This takes a bit of honesty, don't it? I yeah. it honesty, you know? Yeah, and it takes courage, you yeah. know, to say, I need help, you know, yeah. um, help me, you know, and sometimes it looks like that we can't get out of this addiction. It's so hard, you know. Um, there was a time even in my life that I would be, yeah, I'm gonna give up tomorrow and I'd get <laughs> up and I would have a needle. I'd have a shot and I'd be crying because all I wanted was my kids back and I've just had another shot. like. You know, it's so takes over your mind so much. You can't even think like that's how bad it is. You know, so parents don't give up on your kids, and guys don't give up on yourself. Like, reach yeah. out, make these phone calls. You know, like, um, what have you got to lose? You're already losing your life from this addiction. What else can you lose? Like, you know, you know, you lose your kids, you lose your life, you lose your freedom, you lose your mind. There is nothing that that is good that comes from ice. There is nothing. No. Uh, uh, you know. Not one. <laughs> no. Not and yeah, you're still using and it's yeah. not even effective. It's not giving you that first high anymore, so. You just run around in circles, chasing the next, you know, your mission shot. Yeah. You won't get it, you won't get it, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. You, you tell them that too, hey? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You just, you know, there's no hope in it. You know, you just kind of run around in circles, you're going nowhere. You know, I don't know, you know, yeah, I was a dealer, you know, I'm dealing drugs, you know, what have I got to show for it? Nothing. Mm. Yeah, you know, like... Criminal record. Criminal record, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Criminal record, you know. <laughs> one thing, you know, I want to help the youth, you know, there's, there's one thing, okay. So I want to help the youth. Mm. How can I with a criminal record when I can't even get a blue card? Because I've got a violent record and it's about drugs mm -hmm. and guns, loaded firearms. Yep. You know, they don't want you near children, you know what I mean? Yeah. Praise God, even though I got the negative result last year, I believe, I'm believing, you know, if I remain clean or remain, you know, crime free, I'm going to go for it again in 2023. Mm -hmm. I believe I'll get my blue card and I'll be able to help these children break free as well, you know, and be in the right path, you know, and be a yeah. youth worker, whatever it could be, you know, but mm -hmm. just to help them come out of that lifestyle, you know, because I walk around the streets now, you see so many young kids. Sniffing glue. Yeah. On the crack pipe. You know, yeah. On the good. aerosol cans. The aerosol cans, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's not good at all, you know. All you want to do is be able to help them. Yeah. You know? It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. And these are consequences. And I know that myself as yeah. well. You know, they look at me like, oh, you've got a criminal record, you've been to jail. Yeah. What good are you to any youth? But the thing is, this is the honest truth, is someone who's actually lived it can actually relate. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you know? We got all these people that have read textbooks. Yeah, yeah. You know? they've read textbooks, but yeah. they've got no idea. You know, so that's that's where um, addicts actually can, you know, recovered addicts okay. actually can help anybody in addiction trying to come out of addiction. You know, anyone to stop them from addiction, and it's about relatability. And I actually think blue cards for services, Australia, you need to get that. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, but then you, it's a sad thing. You got the people who are like you. Yeah, in charge of children, like, yeah, um, just that case at the moment, you know, that little girl, 12 year old in 2005, or 2015, sorry, mm -hmm. got murdered mm -hmm. by the foster yep. family, you know, so they make it harder for people to actually get blue cards, which is sad, you know. Yeah. But um, I just pray that, you know, with God's favour and God's hand upon it, there's people like us who can help these young people who will be able to get blue cards, we'll be able to support the kids the more in the right way, you know. Yeah, I just, I just pray for anyone out there who's just going through this drama, who's going through the lifestyle of addiction, you know, and 
who tries to go to another addiction too to break that addiction. It's never good. Um. It's never good. You know? We need to be set free totally. And there's only one person who can do that for us, and that's Jesus. You know? But yeah, like all you know, organisations like this who can help as well. So, yeah. yeah. And that's exactly what does happen when yeah. you don't get set free is you go from one thing to another, one addiction to another, whether yeah. it be relationships, sex, you know, other drugs, drinking, and it just goes on and you're never satisfied. No. There's no satisfaction in this, no. is there? No. So, you know. So, yeah, guys, um, if you guys would just pick up the phone, call 1-800-NO-TO-ICE. Families, seriously, call the family helpline, the family support line. We're here to help. We want to see people um, out of out of active addiction and yeah. helping people, you know. And guys, we really need people to volunteer in the op shop here at two hundred four Narang Street, Southport. Um, and we can't AIC can't work without volunteers. Like we're all volunteers here, and we our job our job and our heart is to see people get free. Like we really want to see everyone free from this. And it's such, so much work behind the scenes that you have no idea. Um, and we're not government funded yet. <laughs> Governments, council, start funding us, please. But we really need some support. And we really would appreciate anybody that could even just give two hours of their time a week to come and help us. It would be amazing. So I just want to thank you guys for tonight. And um, God bless. Thank you, Luke. You're welcome. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks.